What is up ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's your boy Goblin, and today we're coming in with a goddamn banger, a true hoot and a holler if you will, and today we're going to be talking about the time that I failed a drug test for a job. Hope you guys do enjoy this video, drop a like if you do, sorry for no uploads the past week, I've been busy, I've been bored, and I've been sleeping too much, alright, I'm going to be very blunt, but either way, before I dive into that, a couple things I do need to get out of the way. First and foremost, I got a song by my boy Samron at the end of this video. Do listen to it. Follow him on SoundCloud, Instagram, Twitter. Juice him up. Tell him I sent you. All that will be linked in the description. And second thing, we had our first ever $20 patron on my Patreon page. And that man is Sam Fitz. So big shout out to Sam. And the benefit that he chose is he wanted me to draw something. And in particular, he wanted me to draw a picture of myself. So here's my artist rendition of me. And here's a side by side of the picture I attempted to draw. So just take note that I, I never succeeded in art classes. And I don't think I've had one since like seventh grade. But I did my damn best. Okay, I did my fucking best. All right. I don't want to see any comments saying like, damn, Goblin, you're a fucking idiot. You can't even draw because I did my best and the effort is what counts. All right. It's 2018. It's not about quality anymore. It's about effort. All right. I tried. Fuck you. I did it. Either way, big shout out to Sam. Link to the Patreons in the description if you want to have me draw some dumb shit too. Let's dive right into it. So failing a drug test. This happened fairly recently actually and this is kind of an interesting story because you know kind of preface this whenever I get super baked there's a certain zone that I can get into right and there's this this particular like part of my mind that just activates sometimes when I'm baked that is like the super motivated like dreamer boy you know like I'm just sitting there thinking like damn bro how am I gonna make as much money as humanly possible you know I just sit there and think about that like for the rest of the time I baked pretty much and I was in one of those binges and I was sitting there thinking to myself like well my current job is YouTube you know but I could totally just do YouTube after work and get a day job and make more you know and get benefits too so I don't have to pay for insurance that'd be raw so I was looking around for jobs and I applied for like 20 jobs on this night, right? I didn't actually take this job. And you, you guys are probably thinking like, no shit, you failed the drug test. I'll get to that because I had an opportunity, all right? But either way, so, you know, I, I didn't actually end up getting a job because I kind of woke up the next day or not the next day, but I kind of woke up like three days later and I was like, damn, I don't really know if I want to do this anymore, you know, but either way. So, you know, I'm applying for jobs and I apply for a particular position that's in internet sales at a car dealership. Now, I have dealership experience. I worked at a Lexus dealership before uh, last year, actually, like early, you know, at, no, it was late last year to like early this year. I worked at a car dealership and, you know, I had some dealership experience. I figured I may not have the car sales, but I have dealership and sales experience so like that. That comes together and equates to car sales, you know? So either way, I slid in my resume. Lo and behold, about a week later, I get a phone call from a manager who we're going to call, what are we going to call him? Let's call him Chad. So Chad's actually not a fitting name at all, but we're just going to go with it. So, you know, Chad calls me and he leaves me a voicemail. Now I'm not a guy who answers my phone, right? If I don't have you saved in my contacts, you're going to leave me a fucking voicemail. And if you don't leave me a voicemail, you're not hearing back from me. And even if you do leave me a voicemail, chances are you're not hearing back from me. But if on the off chance you do hear back from me, you're blessed. And on this particular day, Chad was blessed because he left me a voicemail talking about, hey, you know, saw your application, wanted to chat on the phone a little bit, maybe schedule an interview. So I was like, all right, sounds great. You know, I was, I was pretty excited, honestly, that he called me back because, you know, normally I, I wouldn't really like give a shit, but this job in particular, I thought I was kind of underqualified for. And as advertised online, the pay was pretty good. And the online listing said they had benefits for a part-time position. So I was like, damn, that's pretty good. So, you know, I call him back. I'm like, yeah, you know, I'd love to schedule an interview. Uh, when do you want to see me? And I called him back on a Friday, I believe it was, if I remember correctly. It was either a Friday or a Saturday. And he was like, oh, you want to come in on Monday at 10 o'clock? I was like, absolutely, no problem. Monday, sounds great, see you at 10. Quick conversation, maybe like 10 minutes. He hangs, not even 10 minutes, like five minutes. You know, he, he hangs up, weekend goes by, Monday rolls around. 
I get all dressed up, right? I'm ready to go. Button down, got everything. I got the drip, if you will. I look official as fuck. I was walking in that shit like I owned the place, but I didn't, if you couldn't tell. And, you know, I walk in there, sit down for my interview, and the interview's not really very interesting, right? I, it was barely even an interview. Like, he pretty much just sat down, read through my resume with me, asked me a couple things, showed me around the dealership, and then he showed me briefly around the dealership. And then he was like, yeah, all right, well, uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll give you a call. So he told me he was going to give me a call within the next couple days. Now, I quickly learned that Chad is not an organized or reliable dude because he didn't call me back for like eight days, you know? I didn't get a call back until like the middle of the next week, right? I By then, I'd already thought like, fuck it, I just didn't get the job, whatever. And by this point, I didn't really want a job in particular. But in the back of my head, I was like, if this one like calls me back, since I already went through the hoops and it's actually pretty nice pay and it's part time, then fuck yeah, I'll do it. Now, during our initial interview, he told me nothing about hours, didn't even mention pay. They only had like a range of pay listed online, but told me nothing about pay, nothing about hours, nothing about anything. But I just figured I was going off what I saw online. So whatever. So he finally calls me back middle of the next week and he's like, Hey, you want to come in and see me again? I'm like, yeah, sure. Sounds good. 10 o'clock. He's like, yeah, come see me at 10 o'clock tomorrow. So Thursday rolls around, right? I go see him at 10 o'clock and I was pretty pissed off about this one. Cause I go in, I'm dressed all nice as fuck, right? I- I'm thinking like, Oh, this is the big interview. Like now I'm really going to sit down and talk to boss man. And they're going to, they're going to say some shit. Like what is the time when you faced adversity in the workplace? You know, in those bullshit interview questions. And I'm sitting there, th- I'm scheming. I'm trying to cook up the answers in my head. And he called me in specifically to sign two pieces of paper, a background check consent form and a drug test consent form. All he did, I literally didn't even sit down. I walk in, he comes up, shakes my hand. He's got two pieces of paper in his hand, hands me a pen, walks me over to a table. I sign the pieces of paper and hand them to him. And he shakes my hand and goes, all right, see you soon. You know, he just, the, the drug test consent form, he gave me a copy of it that had the address of the place I had to go, you know? So I'm thinking in the back of my head, I knew like, oh, I'm not going to pass this drug test because my strategy that I've found sometimes actually works. For example, Lexus actually never drug tested me, you know, like they, I think they wanted to, but they like never, they just skipped that part of the hiring process for some reason. So I don't even, is that even legal? Like, is there a law around that? (laughs) Are they finessing? Either way. So, you know, he he gives me that consent form. I sign it. I look at the place and I'm thinking in the back of my head, like, yeah, I'm probably not going to pass this, but I was trying to push my luck because, you know, I, I found that a lot of those higher end places are just better jobs in general. You know, they, they don't necessarily always drug test. A lot of times it's kind of like an honor system. Like for example, imagine like, I, you know, I, I've never worked on wall street, so I could just be spewing horse shit, but I could never picture like a guy going into Goldman Sachs and they're just like, yo, go piss in a cup real, like real fast, bro. Cause like half the workforce probably does cocaine, you know? So I, I just couldn't picture that. And I, I like to test my luck because some jobs don't drug test, you know, like my, uh, summer job I had last summer where I was selling bathtubs, right? I was selling bathroom remodels. I was, a, I was a salesman for him. Never drug tested me one time. And that was a job where I had to drive a lot. And they just, they didn't drug test me. So I kind of figured like, all right, maybe this place won't either. But they did. So I go to the place to get my piss test, right? I'm thinking at this point, I've done no preparation for this. I I like, by this point, I'd forgotten that this job was even on the table until like the day before, you know? Like I figured they just weren't calling me back. I didn't get the job. So I was not ready for this at all. So, you know, I, I go in there super super cute girl behind the counter, right? And I put the emphasis on cute because there's different tiers of attractiveness, right? You got your like hot chick who is just like, I'd fuck you. And you have your cute girl who it's like, man, I would actually do many romantic things with you. I would totally take you on a, like a raw honeymoon. I would definitely take you, uh, you know, shopping. Uh, we would go to a movie. I would definitely candlelit dinner you a hundred percent. You know, we could, we could go bungee jumping if you'd like, you know, crazy shit like that. She was one of those girls where it was like, when I saw her, I just thought, deep down in my heart, like, damn, I would totally take you like skydiving or something, you know? So either way, 
She gives me a bunch of paperwork to sign. I sign it all. Then a different girl, not not the attractive ones, I was no longer happy. I was just kind of bored. You know, walked me back maybe 10 minutes later into this little bathroom and told me to piss in the cup. Now, employment drug tests are pretty much always unsupervised, but it didn't matter for me because I wasn't prepared. So the best I did was I tried my classic strategy of don't use the beginning or the end of the piss stream. You know, I'd piss in the toilet and then aim my piss into the cup. And then back to the toilet, you know, for the beginning and the end. And, you know, that, that strategy can sometimes help a little bit. Personally, I think no matter how I aimed my urine, I was not going to pass that test. So, you know, I, I was just doing some some worthless bullshit, in my opinion. But either way, I did that, piss in the cup, go ahead and hand it to the, the nice little nurse lady, right? She's marking off some stuff on her paper. She's like, all right, you're good to go. And she, I watch her peel back the little thing on the cup, but I couldn't quite get a glimpse of what the results were. Like I couldn't see if the lines were doubled or not. So I think like, all right, whatever, fuck it. You know, if I pass, I pass. If I don't, I don't. And it gets very interesting after this. So, you know, I go home. I think nothing of it. Another like five days passes. And by this point, I think it was like five or six days. And I figure at this point, like, okay, I just failed the test and they're not going to call me. Like, whatever. That's probably what they normally do. And lo and behold, I get a nice call from your boy, Chad, the most unorganized, you know, unreliable guy ever. And by the way, let me tell you, this guy, if, if like, you could just picture a guy who smokes like a pack a day, like just your typical, like old sleazy car salesman guy, you know, like yellow teeth, skin is leather, Chong's easily a pack of reds a day, maybe more, probably at two packs a day at that age. He looked like a really, you know, decorated veteran of the the cigarette game and no hair to speak of whatsoever. That's this guy, right? Like he had like three strands of hair that he combed, you know, it was, it's like, I don't know, just that haircut. If you, if you could picture that, you can, if you can't, then I'm sorry. But either way, he calls me up, leaves me another voicemail, and this time it's a little more vague, you know, so I'm a little curious. He just calls me and he's like, uh, hey, Nick, uh, give me a call back when you get a chance. Just need to talk. Thanks, you know, and I'm sitting there and I'm like, fuck, actually, I think I have the voicemail. Let's see if I can play it for you guys. I think I have the voicemail. For everyone who says my stories are fake, you're about to suck my fat dick. Uh, let's see here. Was this on the... Uh... Hold on. Give me like two minutes, gamers. All right. Is he going to play? Hey, Nick, when you get a chance, give me a call. Uh, give, uh, either on my, uh, the, the office phone or on my cell phone. Six foot- like, what the fuck was he even saying there? He just said like nine different words at one time. That was kind of wild. But I had to cut it off before he said his phone number. But either way, you know, back on topic here. So I get that kind of vague voicemail. He's just like, give me a call. And I'm like, huh, all right. You know, so I call him back. And, you know, the, he asked me how my morning's going. I'm like, good, how are you? He's like, good. Then he gets right into the point. He's like, he's like, hey, so uh, I got your drug test back. And I'm sitting there like, oh, shit, right? And he asked me, he's like, do you take any medications? And I think nothing of it because the first thing that comes to mind is my ADD meds, right? I forgot to tell the nurse lady that I I have a Vyvanse prescription, right? And I do. I still have my Vyvanse prescription. I stopped taking it a couple weeks ago because it wasn't really doing much for me. But at the time, you know, when I took this piss test, I was still on my Vyvanse prescription, right? So I was like, oh, yeah, I have a prescription for a Vyvanse. And he's like, what's that? And I'm like, oh, it's a ADD medication. And he's like, ah, okay. And he kind of pauses for a minute and he goes, uh, well, you know, your, uh, your drug test came up with THC on it. Uh, is there, is there like anything that would cause that? And I just kind of paused for a minute. And I think like realistically, nothing I say is going to get me out of this, right? Like I can't just tell him like, oh yeah, that must be wrong. Cause they're not going to buy it. And worst comes to worst, they're just going to retest me and I'm going to piss dirty again. Right. And I didn't care enough about this job to drive all the way back there and piss in that cup again. It was like, if I got it, I got it. But if I didn't fine, you know, so I, I'm, I kind of pause for a minute and I'm trying to think of what the fuck to even do to explain myself. Right. And finally I decide that the smartest thing to tell him 
was that I smoked at a party, you know, like it was a one-time thing. So I just kind of go like, yeah, I smoked at a party like two weeks ago, you know, I didn't think it would show up. Uh, sorry about that. And he kind of pauses. He does the same thing as me. We're like, he can't believe I just fucking admitted that to him. Like he, I'm probably the first employee who they've pulled up on with a dirty drug test. I just straight up told him like, yeah, I smoked, you know, like, yeah, I, I did that. You know, <laughs> like granted I lied about it because it was not at a party two weeks ago. It was like three days prior, but nevertheless, you know, still, he was probably a, a bit admirable of that, but he pauses and he goes, all right, well, um, uh, you know, let me, let me talk to the general manager and, uh, see what we can do. Right. So I'm like, all right, uh, no problem. Have a good one. Sorry again. Right. And he's like, yep. Thanks. So he hangs up, nothing left. You know, I, I think this is it. Like he's not calling me back. I'm just going to say, fuck it. Two days pass. Right. This is the part where shit gets a little, little out of pocket. He calls me two days later, quicker, way quicker than Chad's normal schedule, right? Way quicker. And he tells me, he's like, hey, you know, I, I actually answered this one because by this point I had his number memorized, right? He called me like four fucking times, five times at this point. So I, I'd, rec- I'd learn to recognize what his number was like. So I pick up this time around and I'm like, hey, you know, how are you doing? And he's like, hey, uh, so talk to the manager um, you know, everything's all good. And he said that, you know, they would be re drug testing me like a month in once I finished my training, just to verify that I was telling the truth. And he, he basically explained to me like, yeah, uh, we understand, you know, it only came up with THC, nothing else. Um, you know, as long as you're being honest about that, you shouldn't have a problem. Right. And then he offers me to come in. He's like, so, you know, when do you want to come in? It does Monday work for you. This guy digs a good Monday. He always loved to schedule things on a nice fucking Monday. This guy digs a Monday. And that's how you know he can't be trusted. If someone digs Mondays, be worried. They're fucked. So either way, he asked me, he's like, uh, so do you want to schedule anything? And, you know, I kind of pause for a minute and I'm like, I'm completely flabbergasted. I'm sitting here like, I thought he was just going to call me to like talk shit. Like I figured like, why, like, why is he talking to me anymore? Like I failed the drug test, right? I guess maybe they just didn't have many applicants or they were just really desperate to fill the position. I don't know, but I didn't take it because at this point I was like, there's no way in hell that I'm going to stop smoking for this job, right? Like that's no, no. I am not going to get randomly drug tested all the time at this fucking shitty job, right? Like, it's not a shitty job. It was pretty okay, but not worth, in my opinion, when I don't need a job, you know? So what I ended up doing is, y'all are going to probably call me a bitch for this, but I, I did, you know, he was a nice guy and he was really trying to do me a favor. So I felt bad saying no, right? So I was like, oh yeah, you know, Monday sounds good. And I was like, you want to do 10 o'clock again? And he's like, yep, 10 o'clock sounds good. So hang up the phone, blocked that phone number, and I never showed up. Never, never showed up. Did he call me again? Probably. I don't fucking know. I, I didn't get anything. So <laughs> shit, yeah, this is, this is a little longer than I expected. But either way, hope you guys did enjoy this video. Drop a like if you did. Don't forget to check out Samron in the description below as well as my Patreon page. Shout out to Sam Fitz once again for being the first, very first $20 patron. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. I'm so rude, I'm that dude I wanna share it with you The second that I lay eyes, I knew that you'd be my boo Stop doing drugs, I guess it's time to make a love song I had to right my wrongs and change before the love's gone I never been with somebody for a whole calendar